focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. In a more for less economy, digitally transforming to stay competitive warrants a change of not just processes but the very DNA of your company. While navigating a disruptive digital landscape, the journey becomes the destination to better customer experiences, improved business operations, and new revenue streams. Now, learning from the experiences of enterprises that have mastered the ebbs and flows of this digital tide can help you get a head start. Let's find out how on this show presented by Hewlett Packard Enterprise and Liveman titled Control Your Digital Destiny. I'm joined by two distinguished guests who will share their insights on the topic. Uh, Som Satsangi, the Managing Director of Hewlett Packard Enterprise India and Vijay Sethi, a man who wears many hats at Hero Motor Corp where he is the CIO and also heads human resources and corporate social responsibility. Gentlemen, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Now, digital transformation, a term that takes so many dimensions, but let's start with the need for digital transformation for companies to consider going on that journey. So that's the first question I'd like to pose to both of you. We'll start with you, Mr. Sethi. Tell us about the need for digitally transforming. Where does that come from and where does it lead a company to? The need, if I was to just put in one line, it's need for survival. Mm -hmm. The companies who do not adopt digital mm -hmm. or do not disrupt their processes using digital will not survive in the long run. All right. The customers are expecting a very different kind of response what they have been getting used mm -hmm. to over years. The products are today different. The ecosystem within the organizations have changed. Mm -hmm. And digital, to my mind, is not a question of whether companies should do or not do. It's a question, can I do now and what else can I do? Mm -hmm. That's important because it's gone from being optional to mandatory Absolutely. right now. It's so, mandatory. So controlling a digital destiny then in that context, how do companies then finally, now that they have, they are forced to go to that journey, how do they come around to that idea? Do you think it's a sort of a necessary evil now for companies? <clears throat> yeah, so uh, as Vijay mentioned, it's not a question of uh, choice with the organizations now. Mm. Now it's a question of timing and how fast they can move into the journey of digital transformation. Mm. And, and we are seeing it's not about... Uh, creating an existing model, mm. but creating new revenue stream and be competitive in the market and also ensure that how they are relevant to their customer and customer services experience. And we are seeing around all of us. I'll give you one or two examples. Take the example of Netflix. Mm. The way we consume the content today, entertainment content, we have never ever done earlier in the past. Mm. And that has brought so many changes and disrupting the current existing uh, content venture. We are seeing local in India, we are seeing Al Balaji, we are seeing Z5, and they have gone a step further. We started creating the local contents in the different languages. Mm. So they are taking to the this entire transformation of digital journey to the next level. Mm. And that's the reality. And that's become sort of default, right? As you mentioned, the, the importance of better customer experiences, improved operations, and new revenue streams are now by default attached to the benefits of digital transformation. Absolutely. It's not siloed in one way or the other. Right. Let's understand more about what Hero Motor Corp how Hero Motor Corp has digitally transformed and what lessons can, can viewers at home learn from that. So tell us a bit about your journey. As far as the digital technologies, and I'll actually use some of these uh, new age technologies, whether it is social cloud, analytics, mobile, or now today, whether it is uh, blockchain, artificial intelligence, robotics, or any of those other stuff. So what we started was that maybe around four or five years back, we started thinking of uh, these technologies. Mm. Some of these technologies put into a POC mode, which is a proof of concept mode, because some of these new technologies, you just can't pump it back into your mm. organization. So we have done a lot of POCs. IoT, for example, is one such technology. We also formed a lot of uh, center of expertise within the organization, mm. where people are being given enough uh, resources mm. to experiment. You do those, you learn about those technologies, try to put it in some places. If it works, you cascade those. If it doesn't work, take the learnings from that, move on to the next, next experiment. Hmm. And another thing that uh, really is a key stuff as far as uh, any digital transformation is concerned is a huge amount of change management which is required. Hmm. Because you need to change the mindset of your own IT teams. Hmm. You need to change the mindsets of all the users. And you have to really get into a very different kind of working. 
Mm. And the last piece that you need to really do when you do all these things is that the processes within the organization need to be really changed. The policies need to be changed because you mm. can't run your organization with old processes, old policies using all these new disruptive technologies. Mm. So these are the kind of things that you need to do at all times. Mm. And the last, if I was to just put in from user's perspective is, one thing with these technologies is that you need to be sure that many of them may not really kind of succeed in the first attempt, second attempt, or third attempt. Mm. You need to do a lot of attempts, mm. but you should not fear failure. Okay, and I also want to get your view on, you know, what what are your views on edge-centric, cloud-enabled, and data-driven organizations? You know, what are you doing in all three See, of them? what has happened, if you really look at the entire journey of IT, and not mm. a maybe 100-year-old journey, but if you look at last 20, 30, 40 odd years, mm. we started with huge data centers, you had so-called dumb computers or dumb terminals in front of it where the entire uh, processing was being done in a data center. Mm. We moved on to the PC era and uh, all those where a lot of computing was done at the PC end, mm. but still a major part was being done at the uh, data end or server end. Mm. Now with the advent of technologies like IoT, mm. advent of machine learning, a lot of other stuff that we do on analytics, you cannot really pass on all the data back onto those data centers and then try to wait for the responses. So what is happening is that edge computing over the last couple of years, or maybe last one year in a big, big way has taken up because the end customers, they are wanting a response which is really speedy. You mm. can't really be putting up huge uh, monolithic servers and try to do computing. Mm. From my data center computing, it has actually moved on. Edge computing has taken up a big way these days. All right. And so what's your view on this? You know, edge-centric, data-driven, cloud-enabled, uh, you know, view of, of organizations. What's, what's your right. take on that? As per the Gartner, 80% of the data is by 2020 is going to be generated at the edge that is never going to come back to data center. Right. That will never go to cloud. Mm. It will be analyzed process at the edge itself. So that is why this edge computing is becoming so critical and important. And that's a place where HP has acquired Aruba and along with Aruba that intelligent we have built in as the edge line server so that we can process all the data which is coming from IoT, sensor, devices, capture at the edge, analyze that things and take the real insight and take the action kind of thing. Mm. At the core data center, then we'll take only very small data which comes to the core data center mm. and which helps in order to define and bring again the outcome from the data center standpoint. Mm. So HP is working very closely with all our large enterprises to help them on the core data center side and also intelligent edge. And also bring a seamless experience to our point next services so that you can have seamless experience and you can deliver everything as a services anywhere uh, in the globe. All right. So technology, people, and economics. Absolutely. Three key words. Was that what, what was going through your mind when you came up with a lot of these digital transformation yes. initiatives like your digital twin and other examples? Absol which have absolutely. Happened? So. All right. Uh, lots of interesting points discussed, but we'll need to take a short break. Uh, but there is still more to discuss on the ins and outs of a digital transformation journey for enterprises. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. If you have just tuned in, we are here to discuss how your enterprise can take charge of its digital destiny with insights from Vijay Sethi of Hero Motocorp and Som Satsangi of HPER. Now, we were discussing technology, people and economics. Let's focus, uh, shift our focus to hybrid IT. What's your strategy around hybrid IT? Okay, so uh, from Hewlett Packard Enterprise standpoint, the, the hybrid is a very, very important strategy for any digital uh, transformation journey. We believe that all enterprises are going to have the hybrid infrastructure. Mm. They will have something on-prem, they will have their own cloud, they will have something on off-prem, which can be any other cloud service provider, whether it's Microsoft, Azure, or any other uh, service provider. And the important piece in that thing is what workload to keep on-prem, what mm. workload to keep off-prem is, is the most important thing for the CIO. And many of the time, the enterprises misses this particular aspect and that how to balance out the workload on-prem and off-prem and how to use these things and take the power of that thing. And that's a place HP has been helping almost all large enterprises. Now we have moved a journey and we have launched a new platform called Totally Composable Infrastructure. That's very similar to what you get 
on uh, private cloud or public cloud environment on your premises with mm. a similar kind of security functionality and availability all the time so, and economy of the scale of what you get onto the public cloud uh, environment so that's a strategy which hp has been building to create a very big uh, strategy onto the entire software defined uh, solution for our core data center recently we have done the two core acquisition one mm. is the ctp which is uh, and also second is the red pixie and these two software we have integrated and enabled into our organization through our point next services which help the enterprises to understand what workload to keep on prem mm. what workload to keep uh, on the cloud environment so that they can get the best of breed solution from the entire uh, portfolio all right and mr sethi the need for a hybrid it approach to balance needs from a public versus pri private cloud perspective what's your so thought so there was that? a time uh, many years back uh, when everything was on prem mm. then came the public cloud and uh, there a lot of apprehensions as far as security is concerned how do you get data how do you port data from one cloud to another all those things are now behind us and then there was this wave which came that all the organization will be shifting everything back onto public cloud hmm. but the reality is there'll be some stuff as som rightly said on the public cloud there'll be some stuff which will be on prem for all organizations hmm. but these two have to work seamlessly and hmm. that's where hybrid plays a huge role you need to decide what workload would remain on the on prem on prem what would go over there what kind of data would be over here but maybe you suddenly need a burst of data some compute is required hmm. and then or maybe even if you are doing a regular stuff hmm. and i'm capturing all the data but when it goes to analytics for the analytics hmm. piece i use the use a software on public cloud hmm. and then i use hybrid as a concept so hybrid to my mind is something which is here to stay hmm. and that would be the strategy that most of the organizations would be really doing for their entire it architecture okay and in in the sense of uh, use cases uh, how does the auto sector leverage digital transformation tools you, we we hear a lot of use cases of yeah. bfsi sector what's your view on delivering value for the auto sector how have they managed okay. this okay uh, so specifically coming to the auto sector uh, it's it's a privilege and honor that almost all large indian uh, automobile company whether it's a two wheeler four wheeler and truck manufacturing organization they have trusted on hp technology we are their trusted partner for the infrastructure hmm. we are also the trusted partner for their entire digital transformation journey as many of them are adopting uh, industry 4.0 implementation there are two core area where we work very uh, uh, strongly with all these automobile company one for their entire sap and hana landscape uh, uh, organization uh, changes mm. because almost all automobile company for their core data center and erp they are moving to the hana uh, platform hmm. and that's a platform where with our superdome flex and also synergy platform we have created a hybrid environment where they can move their workload onto the composable synergy infrastructure and also taking the traditional sap uh, hana infrastructure and industry 4.0 is is the place where the most of the disruption happening in the manufacturing mm. industry iot sensor devices implementation shop floor automation and again we started working very closely and there we have partner with abb who is our uh, partners in advanced iot uh, space mm. so hp and abb has worked together and we are trying to do lot of solution for this iot implementation in in the shop floor automation supply chain and all of those thing so that we can bring all the expertise from hp standpoint what we have developed over a period of time mm. and drive that entire industry 4.0 which is going to be literally transforming and disrupting almost every auto industry in move all right considering the variety of options that uh, mr satsang has spoken of and of course we are in the era of in, you know in, an industrial revolution 4.0 do you think that's been a boon for the auto sector considering it's very beholden to seasonal demands which is where your paper use consumption models which deliver accelerated business outcomes works for your benefit because there are lots of uncertainties that you have to deal with so in a way digital transformation has been a boon for your sector that that's one piece you're right. got them on that nothing with this seasonality there's a festival period there's a dhanteras all those things when there's a huge amount of demand but the reality is even if there's no seasonality hmm. industry 4.0 digital transformation is here to stay irrespective of all that the key thing over here is you need to ensure two things one you need to enhance your productivity and reduce your costs 
in a big, big way. Second, you need to ensure that the quality goes up. And Industry 4.0 is actually impacting both of them. Whether it is time to market, whether it is ensuring consistency, whether it's ensuring that all the data which is coming up from the machine, so you can do predictive maintenance, you can do all other predictive stuff on the entire thing, that's mm. what Industry 4.0 is targeting. Mm. And we at Hero are actually working on a lot of projects on our shop floor, in our uh, R&D center, on other stuff, whether it's on the product piece, whether it is on the processes piece, whether it's on the machines piece, on many of these things. All right. And for all the CIOs watching at home, you have a full-fledged services organization, which is HP Point Next, which helps CIOs with their digital transformation journey. Tell us a bit more about that so that they could also understand how they can ride the, you know, the, the journey. Okay. So, uh, see, any digital transformation journey, one of the area which McKinsey did the report, that in 80% of the cases, the digital transformation journey has failed because of the people and the processes in the organization. Yeah. And Vijay earlier uh, alluded the same thing, that uh, you can have the best of the technology, best of the platform, but if it's not aligned with your uh, strategy, you are not going to enable your organization, it's not going to be successful. So that's a place where our HP Point Next comes in and helps us. So this particular services organization, helps all the CIOs and CXOs in the enterprise space to create the footprint for the entire digital journey, starting from advisory to professional services. Hmm. And once we create the blueprint for any large enterprise for their digital journey, we not only as a, as a services organization, we implement end-to-end, -end, we also operationalize and bring the efficiency so that during operation and maintenance time, how we can bring down the overall cost. So it's the entire journey is starting from concept to mm. delivery and manage and operationalize the whole thing. Mm. So that's a place where entire our point next services arm really play a very major role. And also added advantage, as Vijay mentioned, pay per use. So we have offered the Green Lake services mm. that whatever wanted to use and consume, we just can give as a services to you, whether it's an infrastructure or database as a services or intelligent edge as a services. Mm. So through our point next portfolio, we can provide any kind of services as you pay, mm. as you consume. So mm. that's a kind of new concept which we are trying to bring through GreenLake under Point Next Services. Mm. You span the entire value chain. Now, before we wrap up the discussion, uh, how do you think HPE can help in accelerating your digital transformation journey from here on? You've come so far, yeah. but there's, there's miles more to go. Today, what I see is the amount of investments that... Uh, HP has done the amount of uh, acquisitions that they are doing and the way they have actually ramped up the skills. It has moved away even from SI. It's more of a trusted solutions partner, if I can use, though he was using the word services. But to me, he's uh, more of a solutions partner who's a trusted partner because what happens in the current state is that you really don't know what you're trying to, what will be the outcome of many of these uh, point solutions that you're putting in. Mm. So you need a partner who can work with you, who can iterate with you, whom, with whom you can trust that these are my issues, this is the problem that I'm trying to solve. Mm. And there the guy has to come with all the competency and also has to back up his entire organizational might. Mm. And that's what I have seen with HPE that, yes, today they have also transformed from that perspective mm. and are willing to put uh, their money where their mouth is. That must be music to your ears. <laughs> Thanks, Vijay. <Thanks, laughs> all right, on that note, uh, let's uh, wrap up this discussion. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us your perspectives and insights on the topic on how companies can control their digital destiny. And of course, thank you to our viewers for tuning in. Innovate. Enable.